welcome back to another episode of Black Wave Playground. Today, I'm going to show you two ways to make sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is a very important compound, not just in the chemist toolkit, but in the whole industry itself. At room temperatures, it is a very strong and dehydrating acid. But at high temperatures, it becomes extremely oxidizing, yet still stable. This makes it ubiquitous all across the field of chemistry. The only materials you need are sulfuric acid and 12% hydrogen peroxide. To clarify sulfuric acid instantly, first pour in how much you need. I like to do it over a stir as it speeds up the process. While stirring, I pour in a little less than 40 milliliters of 12% hydrogen peroxide. A good rule of thumb is one milliliter peroxide for every 10 milliliters of colored acid you want to clean, assuming you're using 12% of course. Over the course of 10 minutes, the solution gradually clarifies from red to pink to ivory. Though this solution is nowhere near the boiling point of even water, it will still char a stick and eat its residue too. Pretty soon it becomes clear, but just how pure is this acid? Well, let's see. The density comes out to be 172.5 grams. At 99 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius, the concentration is approximately 81%. Pretty good if you need sulfuric acid stat for expendable uses, but if you want a more dehydrating acid, well, you gotta actually dehydrate it. Dehydrating sulfuric acid requires extremely high temperatures, but even that doesn't guarantee a smooth distillation. To help with boiling, I added some glass from a broken flask I've had for a while. These help create nucleation points, which allow for air bubbles to form and be pushed out of solution. The more you have, the smoother dehydration will go. Next, I pour my sulfuric acid drain cleaner over them. You don't want to fill your vessel more than halfway because sulfuric acid, even if it isn't fully concentrated, has an incredibly high heat capacity which makes it quite stubborn to vaporize. I'll put a foil coat over it to conserve some heat. Before I get this guy hot hot hot, I want to preheat it first just to minimize the risk of shattering. Maybe my fears are unfounded, but I'd rather not find out. Before I go all the way, I build my distillation system around it. Then I turn it up past 10. Soon I get some condensation around the still head. As you can see though, it can't even crawl over it. So, I put some foil over it. This should conduct heat better too and allow more condensate over. Eventually, a gas cloud forms in my receiving flask along with some distillate. At best, it's acidic water. But just to be sure, I'm going to put the receiving head over a paper towel. If it chars a hole, we know we got some pretty concentrated acid. But as you can see, it leaves a rather greasy stain instead. I would give it more time, but I'm getting around one to two drops per minute, which means this dehydration will need a little extra help. Now you wanna be extremely careful as vacuuming essentially puts the sulfuric acid in a superheated state with respect to the low pressure. Observe. See how fast that gas came? That's a cloud of sulfuric acid mist just sitting there. In the reaction flask, the sulfuric acid sloshes around a lot because the teeny tiny air bubbles in it quickly expand in a vacuum, carrying lots of vapor along. Let's try it one more time. In the end, I got a little under 600 milliliters of clear sulfuric acid, but how concentrated is it? The density is 1.817 grams per milliliter. At 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius, that's approximately 93% according to handy math. That's pretty good, but I think we can do better. So I started back up, but this time I want to be more precise just to skim off the water. At 7, I turn on the vacuum to try to get some fumes, but unfortunately nothing happens. Maybe 8.5 will do the trick. An hour later, I vacuum again. While I don't get any big fumes, I do hear the glass chips tinkling in the reaction vessel. Oh, there we go. I got something. It's not much though. So, I'm going to see if 9.5 will do the trick. I actually get some reflux at this setting like I did at 10.5. It creates a sulfuric acid cloud in my receiving flask too. I'm going to vacuum one more time just to see if I can eke out some more water. Whoa! You see that? Yeah, I think we're done. We're done. We're done. That crazy reflux no doubt added some water back to my reaction flask too. And what do you know? It's yellow and contaminated. An hour of strong heating though should clear that right up. No more vacuum though. We're done for the night with that. 
In the end, I still have clarified acid, but just a little less than before. Let's check its density now. And our total density is... is... 182.2 grams. Again, at 32 degrees Celsius, that's approximately 95%. I probably had a higher concentration before that mishap. Still, having 3% less will only negligibly affect a reaction. With one bottle of sulfuric acid drain cleaner, I was able to make very different samples. With the amount of work it took to make this 95%, you really want to reserve it for anhydrous and or dehydrating applications like esterification of alcohols and acids, making ethers, and pure acid synthesis like if you want to make nitric acid or glacial acetic acid or propionic acid, that sort of thing. However, for the amount of time it took to make this acid, which was about 30 minutes, you can use this for much less technical applications. One example is acid hydrolysis, which already requires lots of water. Making gaseous acids like hydrogen halides or cyanides is also better with this acid because it is spontaneous and won't carry any of the water. Similarly, this acid can be used for an aqueous salt metathesis if you want to extract gypsum, boric acid, hydrogen sulfate, or some other insoluble chemicals.